Good evening, everyone. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing while Councilman Sarah leads us in prayer. Heavenly Father, in these troubled times, we ask that you watch over our military, our police, and all of our first responders. We ask that you keep them safe and protect their lives so that they can continue to protect all of ours. May the sacrifices they make always be remembered and appreciated. Amen. I'd like to ask if people could remain standing for a moment of silence. I'd like to have a moment of silence for all of the victims of the recent terror attacks around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Just to advise that meeting notices have been posted as required under the Open Public Meetings Act. The um, first order of business was uh, the resolution to retire to executive session was 2017-103. And at this time, I'll ask our solicitor uh, to comment on the topics that were discussed in executive session. Thank you, Mr. Cerny. Okay, um, at this time we'll move for the approval of the council meeting and executive session minutes of 5-17-2017. I'll make that motion. Second. Any additions or deletions to the minutes? Seeing none, we have roll call. Few? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Um, I should mention before we go any further that um, Councilman DeLucari will uh, not be able to uh, join us this evening. He has an out-of-town work uh, commitment. And uh, Councilman Haney um, is attending his son's induction into the National Honor Society um, at um, Atlantic City High School, so he will be unable to join us as well. Okay. Um, could we have the approval of the payroll requisition list and operating expenses? Motion and second, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, can we have roll call, please? Few? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Abstained is 17969 and 171054. Yes to everything else. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, at this time, um, it is my honor to um, present a proclamation on behalf of City Council to uh, our newly retired uh, police uh, dispatcher, uh, Joan Ward, and, and I'd ask Joan to, to come forward. Joan, this, um, this proclamation obviously recognizes your 25 years of service um, as a dispatcher 
as well as um, the example that you set uh, each and every day that you worked. And it says, whereas Joan Ward has been a dedicated employee of the city of Brigantine since May 4th, 1992, and whereas Joan has faithfully and conscientiously served the city and its citizens as a dispatcher for 25 years, displaying the highest example of character and unselfish service. And whereas the citizens of Brigantine are grateful for her dedication in placing the needs of those within the community first. And whereas Joan's hard work and dedication have earned her the respect, admiration of those with whom she has come in contact with and the affection of her co-workers who are proud to call her a friend. Now therefore I, on behalf of the city of Brigantine and the city council and the people of the city of Brigantine, do hereby commend and recognize Joan Ward and express our appreciation for her many years of dedicated service and extend the best wishes for many years of happiness in the future. And Joan, um, we know that uh, you've been that calm voice on the other end of the, uh, the phone when uh, someone calls in with a 911 call and, and you are uh, the first line of, uh, of defense for our citizens and, and providing um, them with the comfort and also dispatching our, our exceptional first responders. But also we know that uh, through the years you've been so involved in the Lifeline pro program uh, here in Brigantine and have made so many contacts with seniors um, over the years. I can't imagine how many people you've talked to um, over the 25 years, but just to connect them on a daily basis uh, with someone who they know who is listening um, is, is an amazing thing and, it, and it's something that comes from the heart obviously, uh, something that you did uh, because you were, you were very concerned about the people of Brigantine and, and keeping those people connected and uh, having the ability to talk to someone every day is, is a huge, huge thing for someone who is, is um, shut in in their home. So I want to present this proclamation to you. It's a small token of our appreciation. I know the appreciation probably of thousands of people who have talked to you on the phone over the years for all that you've done and wish you the best in your retirement. Congratulations. Admittedly, this is, this is something new for me. Um, I got hired with Joan back in May of 1992, and uh, this is the first time I've ever had somebody I started my career with retire ahead of me. Uh, one thing I will say that kind of echoes what the mayor has said is, uh, in the 25 years I've worked with Joan, whether it was with her in dispatch or on the other side of the radio as a police officer and, and now as the chief, um, the one thing we could always count on with her was she had your back. Uh, and in public safety, that is an extremely important thing, and for the public in general, to know that you have somebody who really cared, who really put their 100% into it, who went the extra mile to look something up that she remembered from a few years ago and, and made a weird connection that helped us, you know, get more information or solve the case. So she definitely has earned her retirement. Uh, I'm very, very thankful for the 25 years I had with Joan, and uh, I wish her and her family nothing but the best in their retirement. Since Joan also dispatches for fire, too, I just wanted to throw that out there since he got that. Uh, Joan has been an amazing asset to the city, and for 20 years that I've been here, uh, I always remember when that first tone of the day would go off and you'd, you'd hear her voice come across, I was like, oh, good, Joan's on duty. And uh, it was great because she was, she was excellent on the radio, she got the call across, she always gave you all the information, never too much. It was just enough to, to get us to where we need to go and, and give us a great synopsis of what we're looking at when we get there. And I definitely, since coming on day work, I, I, uh, I miss our, our little chats in the morning when I would come down and change the board and we'd get caught up and just uh, you know say hello. And, and uh, I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm, uh, you. You definitely deserve this and, and you're gonna be missed.
Thank you, John. And um, you will not insult us if you don't want to stay for the rest of the ad agenda. <laughs> you, you, can dis you can dispatch your family and friends if you'd like to. <laughs> Thank you, John. Okay, um, at this time, I'm going to open the meeting up for public comment on agenda items only. Anyone who would like to speak about any of the uh, items that are on our agenda, please step forward and use the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Mr. Pucci. John Pucci, 100 Sheridan Square. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Good evening, John. Good evening. Uh, the first item I'd like to discuss, it's, it, it's, if, I, if I may, um, it's not actually uh, an item that's on the agenda, it's an item that isn't on the agenda that we do at every council meeting. I'd like to ask the council respectfully request that the prayer, although we do it at every meeting, that it, it, it become an item on our agenda. It, 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 it's missing. Uh, I've never seen it there. Um, I've passed out some uh, several council members and the mayor uh, the minutes of yesterday's county freeholder meeting. They put the prayer on their agenda and also I've been told that uh, the word invocation is used in our assembly. Um, I haven't checked out what, what Congress does although I know they so say the prayer. So I, I would ask that um, we renounce and actually say on our agenda that the prayer is there. So for those people that um, are out of town that are residents here, they may check the agenda on our website that they know in fact this community does their prayer at the beginning of the government meeting. So that's my request. Thank you, John. I, and I think and how the rest of the council feels, but uh, that we can easily do that and um, you know, you gave us a good model to go from the uh, freeholders agenda. And we'll, we'll probably, if council is agreeable to this, um, we'll do it in that order as well. Uh, prayer first and then Pledge of Allegiance. Anybody okay? Fine with me. Absolutely. Yes. Everybody see this? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, secondly, uh, number 10, the ordinance on the uh, dumpsters. I don't know exactly what's, what is in the ordinance. I, I do know that I've traveled the island in the evening at, at nighttime, and sometimes the dumpsters would be on the side of the road, and some of them are painted that um, maroon color, kind of rusty. Uh, so some of them are painted gray, and it's like if you're not really careful, you could run right into them. So um, I guess I'm just asking, is there anything in the ordinance to... <clears throat> to have the dumpsters, if they're placed in the street, that they have some kind of reflective material on them uh, requirement required so people don't go down the street and hit them just because they look like the pavement. I, I don't know, but I'm asking if it is, or if it isn't, can uh, that be placed in the ordinance at this time? I believe, I believe there is that requirement. Um, I also, for council's uh, information, the chief and I met to kind of relook at the way we evaluate whether the dumpsters should be placed on the street or required on the property. Um, and, and Chief put out a, a memo to the officers that do that review on the, on the permit request as kind of a, almost a last resort would be the street. So we're trying to address it two ways. Uh, I'm fairly certain that there is a requirement to have a reflector on there. Um, and if there isn't, I, I will make that part of the permit process. Thank you. And also, as far as the dumpsters, uh, I've come over the bridge, come home uh, before, and I've seen seven dumpsters between the time I get to the bridge in my house um, loaded up to the gills, and, and they're, not, they're not tarped. Um, I think I have mentioned that before. I, I don't know what the so solution is. We all know Brigantines and Windy City, and, 
and, and that, that, that's, that, that garbage get, gets, gets in our bays and in our waters, not, not only on our streets. So I don't know if there's uh, a, another way of, of requiring that dumpsters actually have that tarp on them as part of the dumpster. So instead of somebody <coughs> trying to find a, dump, a tarp at the end of the day in bungee cords, that they just roll it over. I, I think it's really important. I think a lot of the debris that gets in our streets and, and in our waters are specifically from 30-yard dumpsters filled up and the wind blows overnight and it gets out. <clears throat> John, can I just stop you for there? Um, I know that the dumpsters are required to have a reflector, a reflector or something. I think the problem is a lot of times they're parked going the wrong way and the reflectors are in the back, not, which is basically the front. You're, you're right. We've, we've come across a couple yeah. uh, since the manager and I have talked that had that exact problem. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the dumpster truck guys will come in and pull in facing the opposite way right. of traffic and, and drop it. Right. And that um, way you don't see the reflectors. I, I can, I'll amend that memo that I put out to my officers uh, and make sure they check that if it has to go out in the street. Uh, like uh, mm -hmm. Ed said, we've pretty much clamped down on it and the street is going to be absolute last resort. If you have a driveway or a front yard, it, it's going to have to go there whether it messes it up or not. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll just Very add good. the reflectors to it to make sure they check for it and cones. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman, um, Bu it, it seems like the, the solution to that is that, that uh, we give them guidance and we specifically say the, the amount of coverage, square inch or whatever, how much reflective that they should have uh, material that they should have on, and then it should be on all four sides. Mm -hmm. I, I think they need some guidance, and maybe that guidance can be placed in the ordinance so when they come get the permit, we don't run into the situations that the, the chief mentioned a, a minute ago. That's just my observation of driving around at night and what I've seen. Because I use dumpsters also, I, 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 I look at them. Uh, the, the other, work, the other uh, comment that I have tonight is uh, number 11. The ordinance for the introduction, the installation of a handicapped parking on 35th Street. Um, I'd like to ask the question, does Brigantine have an ordinance for uh, commercial establishments that have public accommodations? Do we have an ordinance for commercial establishments? And, and if we don't, um, can, I, can I hear discussion that uh, maybe we should um, at, at the local level, um, I, I know there's some establishments that don't, that aren't, don't meet the ADA parking, handicapped parking requirements. Um, uh, a member of my family is handicapped, so um, uh, it, it means something to me. I, I'm, I'm a, a ADA advocate, um, so if we don't have it by ordinance, I don't see a method of enforcing that. And um, handicapped parking is required. It's not grandfathered in. Every, every establishment that has public accommodations must have handicapped parking. So I would ask if the council would have discussion and, and consider an ordinance, just like these other ordinances for one specific um, handicapped parking on the street, if the council would consider uh, an ordinance for commercial establishments so, so they um, come compliant with federal law of meeting ADA requirements as far as handicap parking. I'm going to ask the uh, solicitor to take a look at that. I, I'm sure there's planning board approval that most of these. I think what Mr. Pooch is talking about, though, are existing commercial establishments. Right. And, uh, yeah, if it comes in front of the planning board, it would become an issue at that particular time. And, right. and the federal law and the state law mm -hmm. requ has requirements existing and it triggers that, that implement or, or call into those, those requirements into effect. Again, what I think Mr. Pucci is, 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 is asking council to do is go one step beyond what the federal law requires and what the state law requires and say, if you own a commercial business in the city of Brigantine, you have to have something. You have to have, be in compliance with the federal law, even though the federal law say doesn't require you to do it unless you're doing construction, unless you're um, doing something along those lines. Um, I think that's, am I right? Is that, that's what we're looking for? 
Um, um, mostly, um, um, Ed, I think this may be the first time I disagree with our city manager since he's got hired. Um, my, my reading of the ADA requirements are there, there's no grandfathered in. We're not talking about new permits going to the to the zoning of the planning board. We're talking about it, it, the, the law came out and by a certain date every existing establishment that had public accommodations must ha provide handicap accommodations, specifically handicap parking spots. There's, there's no grandfathered in. It's not a matter of them going to the zoning or the planning board to, to do it. They have to do it by federal law. They have, by a certain date, a few years after the law came out, they have to be compliant, period. So I'm, I'm just asking that if, if the council would consider those establishments, not wait until they may or may not go to the planning board. In, in, in the meantime, you have a disjustice to handicapped people, disabled people, not having those handicapped spots when they go to that um, uh, a restaurant or establishment. It's my understanding of the federal laws. They must comply, period. There's no grandfathered in. So what I'm asking is, is um, for discussion and would this council consider an ordinance that could be enforceable locally um, that they comply with federal regulations because right now um, they're not complying because there's no enforcement. Because you can't enforce it because there's not an ordinance. The only people currently that can enforce ADA requirements now is the Department of Justice in, in Washington. And they're somewhat overloaded. In the meantime, the, the supplies aren't there for are, are disabled. Th th that's, that's, that's my comment. But John. If, if you go down to Central Business District, <coughs> especially where the Ocean Beverage, Andre, Joe Seaside Market and everything, the only parking is out front of their shops. If you make them do all handicapped parking, there would be no customer parking at all. Well, I, I think there's, um, th th there's a, 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 a method, there's a process in determine for each individual establishment, there's guidelines on if they, if they, if they have to or if they're not, if, if uh, space is available. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about um, exceptions, Deputy Mayor, that, well, it can't really, can't really make it. Like, like you say, it, it may be right that, yes, they can't put one in. I'm talking about that there's other establishments that have plenty of, of, of parking in their parking lots and none of them are ADA compliant. I'm talking about those. I would have to see what you're yeah, talking I, about. Yeah. Well, I, what, I'm asking what, for discussion my, and, and, and right. being well, it looked into. Period discussion. My, 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 into my question is. To anybody in the uh, central business sector, just off the top of my head. And my question is, John, um, I agree that we want to be compliant, but do, from the city manager, does anyone know, do we have any complaints from any disabled people or handicapped people that had problems finding parking spots anywhere around town? Yeah. Uh, respectfully, council, Councilman, I don't, I don't know if your, um, your lawmaking is dependent upon complaints. If you don't get complaints, don't make the law. I'm talking about an existing federal law that's already out there and they should be compliant and there should be um, uh, in my opinion, a local ordinance so it can be enforced. Not that, that the, other people may not know that. They may, they may just accept that, oh, well, there's not a spot for me. I'm talking uh, about helping them uh, out. I agree and, with and, you, John. And having the we federal be law compliant, not, not only if there's a, a, a complaint. Excuse me, five minutes are up. John, if, okay. if Thank you, you. Could, you, um, could you provide a list of those areas you think that are an issue right now? And then we'll also ask the solicitor to take a look at that as well. Because uh, quite frankly, if it's a federal law, I'm not, you know, once again, the enforcement mechanism may not be at the municipal level, but let's take a look at what you're, mm -hmm. where you're seeing those issues. Um, uh, you have to tell us now, just then, if you would. Well, well, well uh, Mayor, respectfully, I don't think um, this public member should be the one going out checking people of not compliance. I, I think the council as a whole has to have a consensus, yes, uh, we want this in our city for our, 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 our people that are disabled, especially disabled veterans. As a veteran, I'm also speaking about disabled veterans. Our county veterans coordinator is in a wheelchair. 
when he goes to one of our establishments to bring a team, there's not a spot for his van. Because the first spot on an establishment must be van accessible. That, that's what I'm talking about. And I don't really think it's my position, although I have done other things as far as the balloons and whatnot, talk to real estate agents. I, on this, this issue, I don't think it's my position to go out and check on everybody. I think you have the staff and the employees um, to do that. But I, I think um, uh, that the consensus of, yes, we should do this for um, disabled people and, and, and enforce it to the extent that we can, uh, and the process of looking at each individual um, uh, establishment, if they can't, they really can't, yes. But, but I, I don't think that's, what, what, that's the criteria of, of not making the ordinance at all for the people that can provide it for at least one spot. But Mayor, respectfully, I don't think that's my uh, position to do it. Um, I appreciate you asking me for it, but. Um, well, no, I mean, if, you, if you've identified a problem, I mean, we can go out and look and see if we can find the problem as well. But if you know the answer, why not let us know at this point and we'll take a look at it. I, I can certainly identify um, the law and what the law is, because I know the law. If, if the council so chooses to, uh, to make a little ordinance, maybe after the ordinance is in effect, um, you know, I, I, I might um, help along there. But I don't think I should be going doing that before the ordinance is in effect. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Thanks, John. Any other public comment on agenda items? Okay, seeing none, uh, we're going to move into the agenda. And uh, the first one is uh, <coughs> ordinance number 19, the public hearing adoption amending the code uh, chapter 105-14 city code as it relates to paid beaches. Do you have a motion and a second, please? I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, anyone wishing to speak on ordinance number 19 of 2017 uh, requiring beach badges on four-wheel drive beaches? Uh, please step forward and uh, you state your name and address and use the microphone. Okay, seeing no public participation at this time, I'm going to close the public portion. Are there any council comments? Okay, seeing none, could we have roll call, please? View? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, ordinance number 20 of 2017, a public hearing and adoption amending chapter 144 of the code entitled dumpsters. Do have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, if anyone from the public would like to speak on ordinance number 20 of 2017, um, this addresses the portable storage units, and it's in, in the dumpster unit um, ordinance. Okay, seeing no public participation at this time, I'm going to close this part. And um, Ed, is there anything you want to add to this? I know we, we had talked a little bit the last time about. Not really. I know we amended it um, at the introduction to uh, have a time of 30 days, and that time can be extended uh, for good cause. Um, but it, I think it's a, a necessary enhancement to this ordinance. Great. Okay, any council comments? See none, can we have roll call, please? View? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? <coughs> yes. Motion carried. Okay. Um, next we have ordinance number 21 of 2017. It's an introduction to uh, the installation of a handicapped parking space at 335th Street. Do you have a motion a second, please? So moved. Second. Chief, everything's in order with the application? Yes, Mayor. Okay, any further discussion by council members? Seeing none, can we have roll call, please? View? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, um, resolution. 2017-104 authorizing the appointment of special law enforcement officers for the Brigantine Police Department. And uh, this ordinance allows for the appointment of those special uh, class one special law enforcement officers. Tyler Shurlick, John Bell, Joseph Patillo, Frank O'Brien, Kenneth Panis, Anthony Castorito, Nicholas Crossan and Ronell Ruiz. 
We have a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Chief, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about how the specials are going to be used this summer. Sure, Mayor. Um, as most everybody knows, uh, our specials help supplement uh, our full-time officers during the summertime. Uh, their primary mission, uh, for the most part, uh, is the protection uh, and enforcement of the ordinances down on our jetty and cove beaches. Uh, they also handle parking offenses. Uh, they'll handle traffic for us, uh, you know, for one of the church events or if we have something going on. Uh, at the museum, someplace where we need a, a police presence that doesn't warrant an actual officer. So they, uh, they provide a very valuable service for us, uh, the most important of which is to try and keep a lid on things down at our South End beaches. Thank you, Chief. Are they already all class ones? Yes, ma'am. Um, this was something new that the police academy required. Uh, in the past, uh, they had no problem with the letter of appointment from myself or from the city manager this year uh, before they would send us their certificates, we had to send them the appointment resolution. They're already legit, they're allowed to work, everything's fine. Okay, can we have roll call please? You? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, resolution 2017-105, authorizing the purchase of one Chevy Tahoe for the police department. Can I have a motion and a second please? Move. Second. And uh, this is being done on the uh, state contract cooperative pricing agreement, which, um, by the way, is an, an excellent price for Chevy Tahoe. Killer. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? Okay. See you Can we have roll call, please? You? Yes. Reardon? Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Be fair and balanced? No. Did you say no? He said no. He said no. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Resolution. One, two, three, four. Motion carried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, resolution 2017-106, award of contract for the firefighter protective clothing and equipment. <laughs> And this resolution, um, various turnout gear uh, were tested by the City of Brigantine Fire Personnel and unanimous in deciding that the InnoTex Energy PPE is providing the best fit and highest safety standards for our firefighters. Bid specifications were then written on those standards. Uh, the City duly advertised and accepted bids on March 9th. And the bids were received. The most responsible bidder for uh, first choice safety equipment um, with a base bid of $2,888.24 per set, totaling a total bid of $95,311.92 for 33 complete sets of gear. Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Chief, would you tell us about the uh, new gear? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, th this process has been going on for uh, a little over a year, and we've had three different vendors come in where our guys have been wear testing the different styles of gear. This gear has uh, turned out to be the best gear that suits our needs. Uh, it's a new design. It was just released last year, so this is the newest technology that's coming out, uh, which uh, provides better ergonomics for easier mobility for our guys. And uh, it's also should be noted that this is part of a grant award and $81,715 of this award is going to be uh, funded by FEMA. So, and we will cover the 13596 the remainder. So that's a, that's a great price for $13,000 for 33 complete sets, which will be turnout jacket, pants, helmet, hood, and gloves and boots, the full set. Great. How many years do you plan to get out? By NFPA, you, you have 10 years okay. is when you're, you need to uh, replace it. So, mm -hmm. 10 years. Thank you. Okay, any um, further discussion? Okay, seeing none, could we have roll call, please? You? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Be fair and balanced? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, um, 
Resolution 2017-107 is a work change order for well number nine, where the city of Brigantine did award a contract for construction of well uh, and well house number nine and did enter into a contract with Clyde Latimer and Son construction in the amount of $1,664,000 and whereas this contract was amended from $1,664,000 to $1,669,995 by resolution 2016-151 work change order amended to $1,678,769 by resolution 2017-37 work order change two. Um, whereas in the performance of the work, it was uh, performed and properly completed, enhanced the project. Now, therefore, the contract for the construction of well house be amended from $1,678,769 to $1,658,341, a net decrease of $20,428. Could have a motion and second, please. So moved. I got to second that. Ed, anything you want to add about the uh, the decrease? Uh, thank you, Mary. <coughs> this is uh, wrapping up the project. Uh, this is the change orders that result from the site work. So we were able to cut back on some of the site work, some of the paving, and uh, and and present these savings to council. Great. Okay. Any further discussion by council? Okay. Seeing none. Could we have roll call? You. Yes. Reardon? For any uh, change order that decreases our costs, I'll happily vote yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cernan, I'm going to ask you if these resolutions can be combined for the liquor license renewals. Are there any, um, there are no different conditions on any of these licenses? No, sorry. So there's no change in the license uh, conditions as they presently are. Can you abstain from one? Yes. Can you vote no from one? As long as it's in the notice. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm going to need a, uh, a motion to combine uh, resolution 2017-108 and uh, to 2017-114. And uh, these are the liquor license renewables for Andres, the Elks, Cellar 32, Laguna Grill, St. George's Pub, the Cove, Ocean, and Ocean Beverage. I'll make the motion to what Phil just said. Second. Okay. Um, at this time, are the, is there any discussion on any of the uh, licenses? Chief, um, I have the uh, report every year, Lieutenant Tom Woodzak, he's our ABC coordinator. He does uh, on-site inspections and also tracks all the calls we have at the various establishments. Uh, he provided me a report at the beginning of this month, which I can summarize for you, make it quick. Um, Ocean Beverage, we had three noise complaints. They were all tied to that uh, outdoor sign and, and stereo system he has. Uh, VFW had one unwanted guest call. Uh, that was solved without criminal complaints being signed. St. George's Pub had one customer dispute. Uh, that was also solved. The customer paid the bill. Laguna had, and this is from January of last year until now, uh, six noise complaints, one unwanted patron, uh, and one uh, intoxicated person call, uh, as well as one attempted purchase by an underage person, where the Laguna actually called us and said, we have somebody underage, you know, come and, and give us a hand. Uh, seller 32, one noise complaint, one fight not observed by patrol, no arrests were made. Two customer disputes that were settled, one attempted purchase by an underage person, also called in by them uh, to let us know about it, and one disorderly person's uh, offense call. Uh, two customers argue when they were gone before patrol's arrival. Uh, all the other establishments had no calls for service. Are you recommending any changes in, in any of the conditions? No, sir. Okay. Council, as I'm sure Council is aware, will consider the information that the Chief has provided specifically as to the individual license to which the Chief spoke. There should be no commingling of that information as to any other license. I say that because we're treating this now as a consent agenda with one vote. So please, as you do that, be aware that the information provided goes to 
the glasses to which the speech the chief spoke of. Okay. Um, any uh, further discussion by council members? Okay, seeing none, could we have roll call, please? You? Yes. Reardon? Uh, considering all the information provided by the chief, I vote yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Abstain from 2017-110. Yes to all others. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, next we move the resolution 2017-115. It's a rental inspection refund fee. Do we have a motion to second, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? See none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next uh, resolution 2017-116, uh, a tax exemption for a 100% disabled veteran. We have a motion and second, please. So moved. Second. Could we have roll call? You? Yes. Reardon? Second. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Third. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Motion resolution 2017-117 is a roadway solicitation uh, for the Muscular Dystrophy Association for the Fill the Boot from the Brigantine Professional Firefighters Association um, September 2nd and with a rain date of September 3rd uh, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, and I'm assuming it's right in front of the firehouse, Chief? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion and second, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Did somebody second it? I second it. Okay, thank you. Seeing no discussion, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Be fair and balanced, yes. <laughs> Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, we move to our consent agenda. We have the Elks Raffle License, number 815, 816, and 817, and the Real Partners Uganda Raffle License, 818. We have a motion and a second, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Could we have roll call? You? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next we move to our council manager committee discussions. Uh, Mr. Simpson, do you have anything? Uh... Just, just a few updates, Mayor, if I could. Uh, first, the good news on we, we spoke briefly a few meetings ago about the Army Corps and uh, their determination that there's a federal interest in evaluating whether Bruins would be uh, beneficial at the north end and also evaluating whether the extension of the seawall would meet their criteria. Uh, we had spoken with the DEP to ask them to partner uh, with us and the Army Corps, and the DEP did formally um, agree to partner. The, the, what that means to us is in the design, in this, in this evaluation phase, uh, the cost will be shared between the Army Corps and the DEP with no cost burden to the city of Brigantine. And if it does meet the criteria, and if it is determined that there is a federal interest to construct either or both of those improvements, uh, it means that the, the Army Corps share would, of the construction cost would be 65%. Uh, the DEP then would share in 75% of the balance, and Brigantine's share total would be about 9%. So it's a, it's a good news for us. It's still at the very preliminary stages. And we still have to hope that this study comes back, um, I'm sure as we all do, that, that supports the installation, construction of groins, and the extension of the seawall. Uh, that is the first. The second is the, I just, I reached out to the county engineer's office today to get an update on the resignalization project at 38th Street and at Harbor Beach Boulevard. Um, the lighting, as you see, the, the electrical work has been complete. There's still some adjustments that have to be made. 
at the fixtures on Harbor Beach. Um, the next phase is the concrete work, and unfortunately they did not have a schedule for that. They're pressing the contractor to, to give us a schedule, but they're shooting for next week, but that's the next phase. Then you'll see the paving of the Harbor Beach Boulevard intersection, and then that'll be complete. Great. The, that, that project, um, I know it's taken a while to, to complete, um, but you see such a dramatic difference in the lighting, the lights that we had, the traffic signals that we had uh, to the ones that were installed. Um, they, they're definitely 21st century compared to uh, <laughs> what we had before. Is there a timeline on as to when the 38th Street light will be turned uh, on? Did, so after the concrete work is completed? Oh, it has to be all yeah, finished correct. first. Okay. And then they will remove that barrier. Okay. Great. Any uh, committee reports by any council members? I have a, um, a request by an individual. Um, they would like to see and willing to work with Ed Stinson and, and uh, whoever, a wall of heroes um, for the local service people, Coast Guard, Marines, Air Force, all the local ones that are active right now have their picture put up in the wall in City Hall and make our, our local heroes. And uh, Liz uh, McKenna asked me to bring it up in front of council. I figure we can just do a voice resolution on that and she'll be willing to work with you and get the pictures and everything like that. I mean, we can do a nice wall of heroes, uh, active military personnel from Brigantine. That's, That's a great idea. idea. That's wonderful. Great idea. So I call for a resolution for that, uh, voice resolution. Second. Good with that, Fred? We had a okay. motion uh, and a second. I'm all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll tell that's Liz a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I just have something with the, about the uh, Brigantine Beach Cultural Arts Commission. Uh, their fine arts festival starts on June the 18th. The big day is June the 25th, Sunday, June the 25th, where they have multiple artists down there, food, beverages, student artwork, uh, loads of parking with police uh, down there to help with the situation with the parking. Everyone's invited out. It's always a great day and a lot of people. So it's a good time to see, get down to the historical museum. Also, we'll have the curator there, Roy Kramer. So it's a wonderful, great opportunity. If you haven't been in that historical museum lately, there's just an abundance of brigantine history down there that you want to see as well as the artwork and all. And I guess while I'm at it, speaking of art, Every Saturday night, we've had two um, art walks the last two uh, Saturday nights. Good turnout, and of course, in the second ward here, Upper East Side, the uh, farmer's market uh, is doing a great job with the volunteers from the green team and all, and that's all I have. Oh, one last thing. Um, we had a situation with the steps up at the seawall, and I want to thank uh, John Doring and our city manager. They got onto the county, and we got the situation straightened out right away with the steps. And uh, that's, that's it. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, at this time, I'll open the meeting for public comment. Anyone who would like to address council, uh, please step forward. Uh, state your name and address, and please use the microphone. Uh, Howard Aber, 406 Albuquerque Lane. I'm also a vice president of Temple Beth Shalom, and I'm a chairman of the uh, Children's Bingo Committee. This summer will, be, will mark our 25th year that we've been providing bingo for the children of Brigantine. The vast majority of the children are not Jewish. They come from all, all walks of life to come to our bingo. They all leave happy and, and filled because we, everyone leaves with a prize and a refreshment. Uh, again, it's our 25th anniversary. We're going to be starting uh, July 6th, Thursday, July 6th. And we invite all the council members to come to that first meeting. Uh, we really would like to see somebody representing the city at that first uh, bingo. And that's July uh, is that in the evening, Howard? That's July 6th, starting at 7 o'clock. I'm sure maybe, maybe Mr. Sierra was young enough to attend the, the bingos 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I was trying to remember. <laughs> I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Right, yeah. Okay, any other public comment? Yes, Mrs. Phillips. Paul, thanks you. 
Ann H. Phillips, 308 27th Street. Just briefly on jetties and groins. It's very good and encouraging to hear that after many years, the Army Corps of Engineers is going to consider using these hard structures to help us to mitigate and control beach erosion. We know that the six were built many years ago, which we can't even see anymore, have worked. And I hope that this will come to fruition um, sometime in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. And uh, as you know, this has been a long journey. Um, the Army Corps and uh, the DEP uh, for many years would not even entertain, and Ed knows the conversations that we've had uh, with our consultant over the years would not entertain the idea of hard structures. Now, hopefully, this is something that um, the research will show that um, what we know anecdotally that they do work, and also from uh, I, the measurements I think we, we've seen. We don't have exact measurements, I don't think, in terms of elevation shifts, but maybe we do um, over the years. But certainly, they have worked, and um, it would definitely be uh, something that, if, if in fact it can be justified, would save on the beach replenishments that have to be done every three to five years, and that's the goal. You know, certainly that, that the cost of that continues to increase, and um, in the interim, as you can see this year, where we're waiting for a replenishment, there's the loss of uh, the use of that beach in many ways. So I, I agree with you. Let's hope this is it, and, and it's been it. I've been at this a long time. This is a big change in their thinking. And thank you to Mr. Stinson for really pursuing this for us. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Mr. Pucci. Uh, Council, I. Uh, I support the class one police officer hiring. I, I think they're, they're going to assist the chief and his department with uh, keeping our city safe over the summer. I support those hirings. I also saw a picture in the, in the paper last week or a week before that the uh, across walks were painted. I think they were painted red this time. Correct. Uh, the, in the central business district. The, in the central there's, business district. There's probably district. a color name for that, Ed. Terra, I don't know terracotta. You know. It seems like a terracotta, <laughs> terracotta color yeah. in Midtown. <laughs> yeah, Midtown. So I'd just like to, the public works director to know that it was noticed, and um, thank you for doing that. I had a couple people ask me uh, about the 38th Street, um, the light, yellow light blinking, and you know, everybody's asked, just wondering, no big deal, but. I think it, it just, on that yeah, when that's I, going I to be a just asked it Yeah, he, he just addressed yeah. that. He just, he just, uh, I'm yeah, sorry, they're waiting here. for the concrete to be completed, and then once everything is done, they will turn Tweet. the signal on. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, lastly, I, I know there was some discussion before about a prior meeting about having a street dedication for the veterans, possibly 14th Street. I know we talked talked about it. it was a few meetings ago. I understand things take time, but I'm, I'm just asking if there's an update on that. I don't, I, Ed, I don't know if anyone has uh, has looked at the location. We had, we had talked about the triangle as well. Or the triangle. Yeah, in that area. The one street, as you know, is is named um, after Mayor Rogi, right in front of uh, the, uh, the real estate office there. Um, but it's something, thank you for bringing it up, we can take a look at and, and hopefully by the next meeting or or the July meeting will have something for you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. Okay, any other public comment? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the uh, public portion. Any final council comments, commercials, um, Just parting words of wisdom? I'd like to congratulate Terry Gregg and the entire staff of uh, Brigantine North Elementary School for their wonderful presentation at Art Night last week. Tons of families and friends were there. It was a wonderful event. They always do a great job. Absolutely. Well, I, I was honored to speak at the memorial service at Memorial Day when Mayor Gunther was out with his family in California. Um, it was a ver very uh, 
heartwarming uh, service. There was a lot of people there. We had our uh, our local celebrity, I'm going to say, is uh, Congressman uh, Kennedy speaking also. Um, seems like that's getting bigger and bigger every year, and our police force and our public works did a great job, and the, and the fire department was there. So um, I just want to keep on keeping Brigantine a fr uh, veteran-friendly community, and I think we do a, a great job with that. Thank you, Andy. Anyone else? Any council? Okay, seeing none. Um, at this time, I need a motion to adjourn. No okay. move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Once again, I want to thank everyone who attended this evening and uh, thank uh, people from Brigantine and from out of town who are uh, viewing this on TV or on the computer. Thank you for tuning in and watching your council at work.